Special episode of Gonzaga Nation. I'm your host alongside the head man, the guy in charge uh, of all this growth at the Gonzaga University and the program making the NCAA tournament all these years. I don't even know if I can keep track of how many it is. Coach Fuse. Yeah. Well, we got cheated on the one, right? Even though we qualified and yeah. won the tournament in uh, 20. So, I mean, I just say 26. So Yeah, I'm right there with you. I count yeah. that as an NCAA tournament appearance. Uh, we're going to ask you a number of different questions, but the first question is going to be the, the, the hardest question for you to answer. Mm. Might be a little bit of a softball. Best shooter ever in Gonzaga history. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Best shooter ever. Uh, we were talking off air just how hard it is to remember back. So, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'd go Corey Kispert maybe. <laughs> uh, our, our producer and our editor kind of had me throw that question in yeah. to start. So yeah. I know for me, it's hard to remember all those years ago. Um, but, but you, you were hoping about, for you. No, I wasn't hoping okay. for me because I know I am. So I just wanted your take. I, I, I just, 20 years later, I, I, you strike me more as a volume guy <laughs> than just a pure Volume guy would be my co-host on Talking Zags, Adam yeah, Morrison. Yeah, no, he was a volume. He was a big volume guy. Heavy volume. That is true. <laughs> well, the, the offense has become as efficient as any in the country, and we'll probably touch on that at some point. But, you know, that most recent group, you mentioned Corey Kispert. You got so many guys in the NBA right yeah, now. It's yeah. unbelievable to yeah. watch. Yeah. You keep an eye on it during the season, but now when your season's done, the transfer portal's closed with all that craziness of you having to pay attention to what's going on. Do you get a chance to really sit back and enjoy what your guys are doing in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, enjoy slash you're uptight for them and, and rooting for them. And, and, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, we were just locked in to every minute of every game, you know, myself and then, you know, my boys are so basketball centric. So, uh, it's just been great. I mean, it just seems like one night after the other, one of our guys is playing. And if, if, if not one of our guys, then one of the guys I coached last summer uh, with Team USA in the World Cup, you know, yeah. it's Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards. Um, gosh, uh, Brunson was just, Jalen was just awesome yeah. <laughs> during that run. Josh Hart. Uh, so there's, you know. So a lot of those, but yeah, it's been exciting. I thought Chet did great. Uh, you know, I don't think something that they talked about enough in, in, in Chet's uh, case was he set this out. We were talking before the season and you know, I was trying to get him pumped up for that. And he was like, Hey, I'm going to play all 82 games mm -hmm. and I'm going to be rookie of the year or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, hang on now. I said, <laughs> just like that, that'll, you know, whatever, take care of itself. There's other people voting, but like playing 82 games, that's a, that is a great goal. Yeah. Uh, especially how they wrong, wrongfully labeled him, I thought, after he had that just totally fluke injury yeah. in the off season. Because he's one of the toughest guys I've coached. I mean, his body might not look like it would be tough, but he, he is tough. And he never missed a practice or missed a rep or anything at GU. So for him to... And, and to go through and play all eight, 82 games uh, at that level, I think he deserves a lot more credit than he uh, than he got. Yeah, he was impressive to me. That was the one year where, you know, restrictions going to practices and watch. So I didn't see too many practices uh, that year, but I was always impressed in watching how physical he was yeah. with the lack of size. Because everybody yeah. gets focused on the lack of size, but yeah. he was so – into every single drill and every single possession I watched that year. And how he'd respond. I mean, he'd have these horrible, you know, knockdowns to the floor or wipeouts. You go, ooh, pop right back up and, yeah. uh, um, and, and never shies away from trying to block somebody, trying to dunk it. You know, most guys are so afraid with that silly, don't want to get dunked on. But, uh, yeah, he's been great. Andrew's been Phenomenal, He's I think. Great, just yeah. big shot. He had a bunch of big shots the other night. They just had a tough, a tough ending to that. And and uh, you know, for the most part, I think he's guarded well. I think uh, Jalen's really, really hard to guard. Yeah. Especially when he has that much usage. And uh, um, and yeah, so we've just been locked in and 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 following that, enjoying that. Enjoyed watching uh, Jalen Suggs. Uh, they were a fun team to watch. And he did his Jalen 
Suggs thing, man. He just the entire crowd would get engaged, yeah. and and I was like, I mean, they turned that place into a college arena, and uh, he had a great year and stayed healthy all year and showed uh, uh, what he could do. I thought Corey did a phenomenal job just dealing with all the stuff he's had to deal with. We watched Rui obviously in the you know the uh, all the way through and in the playing game, and uh, Zach Zebo's in a good yeah. spot. Right now, really good spot. That ironically was done. Uh, uh, Team USA, uh, uh, the one year I was just coaching the select team, the, the younger guys that just come in and scrimmage, and and Pop and I were just having lunch, and we just kind of put that thing together uh, over lunch. Yeah, that, that's funny how you know as your coaching career has evolved, you know, Coach Kerr asks you to join Team USA. You're having conversations with with. Popovich, a Hall of Famer, um, and you're able to kind of push your guys in the right way, and they trust yeah, your, yeah. your value and your opinion and, yeah. and how you've developed players. Yeah, and, and it's – I just think, I mean, I have the highest amount of respect for both those guys you mentioned, plus all, you know, all many of those guys at that next level. And, and so I don't even know if I needed to push. It was just more like, tell me about, you know, and just, and also sometimes just explaining to him like, hey, you know, Zach's really young still. Mm-hmm. I mean, he came out of our place at 19. And he, and I'm, you know, same thing kind of with Chet, like, hey, don't think he's not, he's one of the toughest, most yeah. physical guys we've ever, he doesn't shy away from anything physically. And I said, he's just kind of had a bad hop. It's been a foot, it's been a shoulder, it's been kind of, you know, all over the joint. So, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, the cool thing, one of the cool things, there's been so many cool things with the USA stuff is just, there's a healthy respect from all the guys that coach uh, at that level, but also all the players watch our games and, yeah. and, and, and play with our guys now. Yeah. Well, one of the players you mentioned in the playoffs had made some huge plays, Andrew Nemar. He joined us when he came back to Spokane at All-Star break. There's lots of places he could be. Obviously, he came yeah. back because of Ryan being uh, playing here at Gonzaga now, but he wanted to be back in Spokane. Uh, he told but just, us... I no, hate to interrupt, but he came back the year before to Spokane, before Ryan was here, too. Oh, I didn't know he that. Just, yeah. So, yeah. Even bigger yeah. piece to, to <laughs> yeah, want right? to come back to like, Spokane. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but what I was going to say was he shared the the fact that you gave him a lot of freedom and the ability to just learn the game, see the game on top of what he already knew. And that's prepared him for the, for the NBA. I thought, I think he has been streamlined so unbelievably well at that point guard position to come in and play. Yeah, but he just, a lot like you, I mean, he had a just a incredible feel for the game and... Uh, um, I was talking with somebody yesterday about, you know, there's only, there's a small number of guys that even see, you know, some of these things that yeah. are available. And then there, then you combine that with then even smaller number of guys that can actually put that ball in that small window, especially that's, that's happening, you know, with that level, with all the athletes and the size. And then uh, I, we were talking about uh, Jalen Suggs and the, and the pass that he made, you know, way back when after he blocked the shot or whatever in the, uh, yeah, against UCLA. And then I'm like, then you got to be a little bit confident slash crazy, you know, yeah. to, uh, to even attempt it yeah. in some instances. And that can be some of their best qualities. And then sometimes those lead to t- turnovers and it can be some of their worst qualities. But the fact that, Andrew's just one of those guys that just sees it. He's always, you know, play ahead and the game slows, slows down. And, and his passing ability is uh, he doesn't give enough, get enough credit for that. So how as a coach do you evaluate and, and look at those kind of qualities that don't show up on a stat sheet? Like yeah. it's one of those things where you, you can see it, but you can't necessarily quantify it. You can work on it, but it doesn't maybe necessarily show up the next day. It shows up over time. Yeah, you, I mean, I just think you watch. You can just watch, and I can watch guys play, and you can just, ooh, that's a nice pass, or that's a nice, boy, and that was a nice cut. That was a nice, boy, he knows how to play, you know, and then you, you know, keep watching him more, and, and uh, that's something that obviously we look for, we really, really value, and, and um, some instances you can see it just, you know, uh, right away. And so I, I think that that also, I think, is something that is always going to be there when 
you're evaluating, you know, talent to come to our level, you know, at the college or the next level, you know, when you, you, you think about taking guys in the draft and, and or trading for them as free agents or anything like that, you know, it can't just all be analytically based. Yeah. You, you have to, there's been numerous plays where, just even in these playoffs where they're raving about, oh, you know, see that shot or that dunk or whatever. And it's like, did you see the pass before the dunk yeah, that Andrew sure. made? Yeah. Like, <laughs> on the money, on yeah, target, on in money, rhythm. on time. And then, yeah, he, yeah, he dunked it. Like, okay. But, uh, yeah, so I think there's always, there's always going to be that. And I'm trying to always stress it, you know, because it kind of, not a younger staff, but it's definitely – um, you know, a staff that's definitely came up with the generation of analytics and there's a, there's a big spot for analytics, but there's always going to be a spot for just recognizing feel and how to play and, and, and making the right reads. You touched on staff and, and a lot of the guys are younger. You're one of your best friends, Dan Monson, a guy yeah. that I committed to before you took over and then I played for you. Uh -huh. He's back in town. How is how has that been? I'm sure you've helped him like crazy uh, get reacclimated. I'm, I'm sure you guys have had numerous conversations, but a little bit of nostalgia. I'm sure a lot of support, a lot of uh, what's that been like? I, all of the above, like nostalgia, um, just great to have him back here. Uh, all of us are kind of ganging up throughout the profession to try to help him. Uh, but then, you know, also I think, you know, it's a little overwhelming. I mean, you know, Eastern, that, that, that can be a tough job. And, you know, what, what Riley did there is amazing. I mean, he did, he did a really, really, really nice job. And so I think there's just, you know, getting him through those adjustments, getting him through the adjustment. You know, he's, he's, a, Cali or he's a Californian now, and so <laughs> he's been bitching and complaining about the weather up here already. So, uh, um but yeah, I mean, he'll do great because he's so, I mean, he's so well loved up here and, 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 and has kept so many of his friendships and relationships uh, up here. And, and, and he's done a great job. He's done a great, did a great job. Obviously, the whole nation was enthralled with uh, watching Long Beach in, the, uh, in the, the run to the tournament and then in the tournament. What a great story. Yeah, that was a great story. And that was so weird seeing him playing against Tommy, too. Yeah. That was almost like the NCAA tournament was like, hey, what storyline can we come up with here? Yeah, that, that, I'm in on the selection stuff and all that. that it just doesn't happen like that. Yeah. It's just that, you know, <laughs> they're way more worried about one seeds and the last you know, four schools picked or the last schools picked. They don't have time to, at that point, they just start shoving numbers in. But everybody everybody has those uh, theories, whether it's putting all the Gonzaga guys in the brackets or, you know. Well, it makes for good media. It for, does. For, for guys in my seat. It does. And the national know, guys oh, they're too. putting Calipari against so-and-so, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, I, I don't see it. Any chance there's an Eastern Gonzaga game on the docket? Because uh, I know you don't like playing. Yeah. You, you haven't played Boise State yeah. yet with Leon. Yeah. That, that would be a tough one. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't <laughs> see it. <laughs> uh, stay on the topic of uh, uh, young assistant coaches. Brian Michelson, kind of, we had touched to him with him about you coaching the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, first off, how did the opportunity come from Coach Few or from Coach Kerr? asking you to be a part of that staff and, and how excited are you to, to represent the country and on the biggest stage, really? Oh, I mean, I'm just, I don't know, I, don't even, I can't even like, uh, it's hard to describe the excitement, the anticipation, just the uh, uh, humility and, and it, to me, it's the highest honor. Obviously, we all love coaching where we coach at, you know, and that's, that's our main job and and there's nothing bigger than that whether it's at Gonzaga or at Golden State or at Miami or or for the LA Clippers but I mean when you get asked to represent your country at the highest level of, of basketball I mean that's that's as good as it gets uh, and it's just been having went through the whole um, World Cup season with the staff and don't forget Grant Hill is our general manager who's just one, I'm sure you've met and dealt with Grant a lot. I mean, he's as good a human being as there is uh, out there. So sharp, um, uh, just a great communicator, 
uh, very incredibly humble with the, the, all the guys in that room share just that incredible humble uh, uh, personality and, and uh, uh, warmth uh, when you look at just the incredible success they've all had. And uh, that's probably the best part of the, the whole thing, at least going through the World Cup, was just, I mean, we spent six, seven weeks all together, you know, and for the most part, we're together every night. You know, we usually go out to dinner and do stuff. And, and it's just great. It's great talking X and O's. It's great talking just stories. It's great talking life. It's, uh, um, it, it's just been a phenomenal experience this far. Now we got a whole new group of guys. It'll be great meeting them, hanging out with them, getting to compete with them and trying to help them, uh, win a gold medal. It's, uh, I don't think people realize what those guys give up. I mean, uh, to do this, I mean, it's seven weeks, uh, you know, for the most part away from your families, the families will travel with us some, uh, but it's seven weeks and, you know, some of those guys are going to play almost all the way up to our training camp. Yeah. So in the fact that you've been immersed now in the highest, the high level players at the World Cup, you're about to do the same with the, the, the Olympics and now you're adding Steph and LeBron and KD to the mix. You're seeing the absolute top of the peak of how good players can be. Yeah. The, the players at Gonzaga are, are at the peak of the game in the college level. What are the similarities or the differences between the best of the best at that level and the best of the best at the college level? Uh, I mean, the similarities are just the drive and the focus and the amount of work that they put in, uh, you know, is – is the same. I mean, we've had you know guys like to you that come in at all times of the day and even all times of the night to rep it out, rep it out, rep it out. Um, the the willingness to to basically take instruction and 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 you know take coaching or whatever is is I've been really really surprised uh, 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 with that. And then just you know the the I think the difference is just the level of athleticism, the level of the size, and some of the things that those guys can do are, are just really, really special, you know, and then kind of coincides with some of the real special ones we've had at Gonzaga. Is, uh, is there anything in particular role-wise that you have with USA Basketball? I know a lot of coaches structured, hey, you're going to be, you know, defensive oriented focused or this I know as the lone college coach you might see the game differently than the three NBA coaches yeah. so your focus might be different well I mean the interesting thing is and as we get we talked and experienced it more I mean I think we all came to the conclusion that FIBA game is way more like the college game than it is like the NBA game yeah I think they were all taught me that how finesse the NBA game has become with just you know, totally, totally leaning towards the offense. And, but now these playoffs seem, you know, fairly physical uh, to me. But, I mean, just anything in the paint and FIBA is nothing and <laughs> no yeah. fouls. No. So it's very difficult sometimes to generate, you know, post-ups and, and post-play. Uh, and just obviously, you know, there's no – Three second in the key defense, like you have in the NBA. So there's help side. There's just what we have in college. You can just jam the lane if you want. So there's no not a whole lot of those free drives to the rack, and you know everybody getting out of the way so somebody can dunk it. Uh, but we, it's uh, Steve and I, I think that's the one thing maybe that uh, um, Steve thought about when he went to select me or whatever, we've talked about it. We, I mean, we have very similar philosophies for basketball. I mean, that's why I've always loved watching his teams play. They play with great freedom. Um, you know, they ha they'll run a set or action, but it's based on reads and feel, and, and then the guys just play. And they have great flow, at least in my opinion, and they're hard to guard because of that. Um, and they kind of play, you know, I, what I say, a beautiful brand of basketball, you know, and I think, you know, when, when we're clicking and we're doing what we can do, I mean, we're, we can be very, uh, similar to that. So, uh, we're, it's more of a collaborative effort. His personality and my personality are a lot alike too with how we coach. I think if one of the first things he said is he wanted to harness all the 
knowledge in the room, you know, and not and use that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we just try to do. And I mean, you got great knowledge in that room with Eric Spolstra, and, and I really got to know Ty Lu, and he is he's a really, really, really uh, good, good coach. And obviously, Steve's uh, terrific, and then it, and it also helps to have, throw things off Grant. And then the unsung hero of the whole, you know, Olympic movement um, for the U.S. in basketball is is a, a guy named Sean Ford. Yeah, um, he's incredible, and he puts the whole thing together. And and what he juggles in a day, I mean, is unbelievable. <laughs> From the agents to the players to the the people traveling with the players to the FIBA people, um, just to everything. And he's just, to, and then even, you know, is in on all our meetings and helps us just even with basketball stuff with kind of over the years, how have we lost games? Well, you know, in 2012, we lost, you know, this because, you know, mm -hmm. 2012, you know, and yeah. then, when, then we lied in 2019, we had this one game, you know, where they hit a bunch of threes and it's just like, uh, he, he's a great friend to all of us and just, I think he's really one of the unsung heroes and, and was there obviously throughout the whole Coach K run and with Jerry Colangelo and, and all those groups. Well, you touched on feel, and I think, you know, you've brought out uh, your best teams have had two point guard ball handlers. And I've said mm -hmm. this on air with Greg Heister, and he'll argue me left and right. And I know you're friends with Greg. We get into it on different things, but your best teams have two ball handler decision makers and historically. Yep. Last year, Nolan, I thought, showed tremendous growth. Ryan Nemhart had a little uh, getting used to what you wanted and getting used to where everyone's going to be, but I thought that backcourt was tremendous by the end of the year. Yep. How do you get two guys that are used to having the ball in their hands at the same time to work so well together? I think just playing fast like we do and back to what kind of we mentioned earlier, playing with a lot of freedom and, and just a lot of flow. So it's not just, you know, we're regimented. This guy's going here, this guy's going there, and you got to do this, you got to do that. And so there's tons of possession in a game. And, you know, like I tell everybody, like, I mean, who was the point guard? Was it Jalen or was it, you know, Andrew mm -hmm. in 21? Yeah. You know, you could say you would say Jalen, but then – you know, a lot of games down the stretch, uh, Andrew was in all the, a bunch of meaningful ball screens. And so, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's both. You could I'll go all the way back. Was it Quentin Hall or was it Matt Santangelo? Uh, you know, was it you? Was it Blake? I mean, you both, you, you know, you both could shoot. You could pass. You could lead a break. You could set up an offense. You could break a press. So. It's very, very comforting as a coach to have two guys like that. And just to your point, like our offenses have always, always flowed better when we had, you know, two guys who at least played the point in their career out yeah. there. The coaching world is topsy-turvy up and down, especially now with the transfer portal, with the NIL and everything. Was there one – now, you have never – made the decision to move on to yeah. another opportunity. I'm sure there were plenty that made you think, if you want to go into those in detail, you're fine, but probably not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that won't happen. <laughs> uh, I had to at least kind of yeah. give you the door, right? Yeah. Uh, was there one this off season that really surprised you? Was it Calipari going to Arkansas? Was there another was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming? Um, obviously, I'm great friends with Cal. Um, and, uh, you know, that's really evolved just over the years. And, and, um, and we talk a lot. Um, I, I mean, I knew he was really frustrated, you know, with everything. And, but it still surprised me. And, you know, and the timing was very surprising. I, I, um, yeah, I, would, I, I can't think of one that probably surprised me more than that. But there was, some, there was a couple of head scratchers this year. You got that six-year deal with Kentucky. It sounds like that's going to stay on the table. Uh -huh. uh, with Arkansas probably becoming a premier program with him bringing in talent, would that be an option? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Because yeah, you guys will play anybody. That's yeah, one of the things yeah, guys yeah. want to play here because you'll play anywhere, any, anybody. Yeah, and, and Cal does the same way, you know. I think we both got to the point where we try to do what's best for basketball all, instead of just always worrying about what's best for Gonzaga or Arkansas or Kentucky or whatever. And, you know, those have been great games. I mean, that even, that, even though we were both – 
maybe not having the type of years that we usually have last year when we played. That was a really, really big game and got a big number on CBS. So. You as a coach, obviously, you got to keep your eye on, you know, all the evolution of the game and the changes. You mentioned, you know, CBS. So, obviously, they put you on primetime television because you're going to draw numbers. Correct. Uh, the NCAA tournaments talked about expanding at times because of numbers, TV media rights, power conference realignment, all these things. Yeah. I hope it doesn't change. Yeah. I hope it doesn't grow. What's your thought? I mean, I'm kind of with you on that, I, I, I think. It, it's it's such a great you know entity right now, and I think it's for that first week or two, it's the greatest sporting event out there. I feel like, um, and I think it I, you know you don't want to lessen the the regular season. I mean, I understand what some of the thought processes are with just you know there is great parity happening. It's getting harder and harder, maybe. To, to choose the 68. But at the same time, when you go through the mock, kind of like, well, here's who would have got in, or, you know, if we go to 96 or whatever, it, I mean, it would just make the, it would make the regular season just. Not as know, important. Not nearly as important and probably not very watchable a lot of times, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I I'm very into intent on listening to the side of expansion and open-minded to it, but very reluctant to just jump all in on it. Say is where I'm at. Yeah, with with the NIL being so ever changing, like I, I've always been of the mind. Well, it's not NIL. It's <laughs> let's just call it pay for play at this okay. point. Okay, with now. pay for play as yeah. it is now, like I've always felt like the guys should have been paid something, whatever yeah. that would have been. And, I'm not I, sure. and I would sorry to interrupt you. No, I would good. correct myself again. Like when this originally came out, we had probably two of the great examples of NIL in in. Drew Timmy and and uh, uh, Chet Holmgren. I mean, they they had legitimate, legit. I mean, they they had national deals and national brand deals and things like that. And, you know, as did Zach Eady. Obviously, as does somebody like Caitlin Clark. But uh, you know, what we're dealing with now is just straight. Yeah. So, how do you differentiate differentiate Gonzaga and the value that you can bring to their game to get to where most guys want to get play professionally at the NBA level? in regards to because so many of these monetary deals out there are just in my eyes they're overvalued yes it's i i thought by now it would have come back down and there would have been a little bit of softening and really figuring out what a player's true value is yeah it hasn't happened yet but yeah, you i guys, don't think it's based on their true value i think it's yeah. just based on that program sure <laughs> surviving or you know staying relevant or or staying in the hunt to, for a Final Four, you know. But I think a lot of it, though, is you might throw, have X amount of dollars and keep throwing at at a roster to fill it with X amount of money, but the talent, but the talent doesn't fit, or the coach Correct. doesn't understand how to put yeah. the pieces together yeah. with what they have. How are you able to continually put together such a good roster? Because you look at the offseason additions, and I don't know if you're able to speak on individual players yet because they haven't yeah, signed. That's but, funny. I checked on that today, but we can check. On, we can talk on you know the ones that yeah. Pretty but much. how do you? How are you able to show value for players coming in that there's more than just money out there? Because that's a part of it. But there's yeah. also the experience. There's the winning of games in March. There's the ability to prepare themselves for a career where they want to ultimately be because playing in the NBA could be a seven, eight year, nine year deal making money. Playing Real in college money. for one year some yeah. place might just be a one year deal right. making money. Yeah, no, that's a great, great question. And and certainly what we totally focus in on when we're, you know, in the transfer portal is finding the guy that will value that and does understand like, okay, we got a track record of not only winning, and if you want to talk about growing your brand, I mean, one of the most popular brands in all of college basketball, but also we have a great track record of moving guys on to the next level. And then, you know, that's that's where you're gonna make, you know, hopefully some generational money. This, this, is, a lot, this is a lot of money or whatever, but you know, Uncle Sam's going to take 50% of it. <laughs> and God, let's be realistic here. And then, you know, you're not going to go out and be buying your family a house with all this stuff. And, and uh, so, and, and the ones that, 
as you know, over the years, the ones that end up maybe valuing that and, and that resonates and they and listen are the ones that belong at Gonzaga because that's what we base this program on, you know, and they want to come here. They want to win. They actually want to be a part of a team. Uh, they want to, you know, they understand there's going to be a development piece. They want to be coached. Um, and, and they've seen that. That's the best thing about this transfer thing. It's, you know, in, in a lot of respects, the re recruiting aspects are a lot easier. It's, it's more cut and dry. It's not a long, drawn-out process. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's a shorter process, and it's, you know, they, they, that resonates. They're like, nope, I want to get paid. I'm going to get that. I'm going to go get the most money I can get. And it's like, fine, all right. It's not you know, the place for not, me. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not going to work here. Go get, go get them, you know. Uh, but, the, yeah, and there, there's still a lot of players out there. And then I personally think, especially, you know, last year and this year, I think my team uh, deserves a ton of credit for staying together, and wanting to play together, valuing Gonzaga, this whole uh, experience, life, you know, with the school and, and here in Spokane, and just, play, you know, playing with each other and sticking together as opposed to, you know, putting their name in the portal to go see how much money they could make. Yeah. And uh, they deserve a ton of credit for that because that, that was, it's very, very, very rare. Yeah, I thought it was unbelievable um, yeah. in a good way because yeah. guys, guys see what their value is where they're at and yeah. how they can improve themselves and how they can be a part of what you talked about, a winning culture yeah. and a winning program, win games. So they're placing yeah. the right things uh, in front of them and valuing them and supposed to chasing something somewhere else. Right. In regards to uh, the league expansion with the WCC, obviously Oregon State, Washington State, two years from now it's going to be Grand Canyon, Seattle U. Stu Jackson, I think, is doing a good job at least being proactive right. and so the league's not kind of backpedaling. They're out front making decisions. It, uh, it's a weird landscape right now. And, and they, yeah, he's doing, Stu's doing a great job as, yeah. as a commissioner. I mean, it's just been awesome uh, uh, watching how he, he got thrown into a really turbulent time, right? And so, um, I mean, I'm, in, in that regard, I mean, I, I haven't been a huge expansion guy. I do very much, I think, the, uh, uh, having watched Grand Canyon over the years, I think that's a, I think they've become a program that is operating on a high major mm -hmm. level. And I think we saw that when they came to Spokane last year for the NSA tournament. I think uh, what Bryce is doing there, but it obviously is huge, but just as important as what Jerry Colangelo has been doing, uh, you know, behind the scenes or, or, you know, supporting them and kind of helping them navigate through all this is because they are, uh, they, they have the same mindset that, you know, that like we have at Gonzaga. To, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big, you go to a, a Grand Canyon game, it's a big time deal, you yeah. know, and they're, and they want to get bigger and they're growth oriented and they're all of that. So, uh, I mean, I think, I, I think that that's definitely a positive, uh, uh, there and who knows what will happen with the you know all the other the the Pac-12 schools that all disassembled and all that it's 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 a it's a crapshoot to predict what's going to happen there yeah it's uh Leon Rice told me that the Grand Canyon's home atmosphere is as good as Gonzaga's and San Diego State's he puts those three as the best yeah. on the west coast yeah I, I'd say that's right yeah that's right and their their support um just even watching their game against St. Mary's and quite frankly, watching their game against Alabama, that was a winnable game. Yeah. Uh, their athleticism was elite uh, this year and, and, you know, some of their shot making and all that. We played them the year before and, uh, you know, in the first round game and they were a handful uh, on that game also. Uh, season gets over. Uh, you got to get a little bit of wind down time, but the transfer portal picks right yeah. up. It finally closed. I'm sure the portal at least closed to go into the portal, but you can kind of yeah. still add and recruit. Right. Uh, there's still some stuff going on there, but what what do you do other than fishing to just kind of decompress and get away from the grind uh, of the college season? Yeah, I mean, we go out to the lake a lot and just and hang out there uh, as a family. Um, you know, still like to mountain bike do stuff like that. But between that, you know, to be honest with you, the 
<laughs> there's not a whole lot of downtime with the <laughs> transfer portal and USA basketball and USA basketball last summer uh, also. So uh, uh, the best part is like the family's been able to join me on some of these journeys with USA basketball or else I'd literally be missing out on an entire summer uh, with them. I mean, last year I got back September 11th or something. I think we got back or something like that. I mean, so we were right into our workouts at Gonzaga and and right into the season. Uh, this summer will be a little bit different because I still have part of August. I think the uh, closing ceremonies are on the August 13th or something like that. Well, the fact that you're gone long stretches both summers, you got to value just how good your staff is. Yes. And to keep uh, everything kind of moving in the right direction, not right. missing a beat. Uh, just touch on the staff real quick and how valued they are. Uh, I mean, they're incredible. And and I, I think any head coach would tell you that. I mean, th you have to lean into your staff and and uh, even more so now with just, you know, the um, you know ability to have to go out and raise or generate or somehow organize to get money into the uh, collectives is just really of the utmost importance, you know. And I think that's hard for a lot of people to – understand but that's just what you got to do now um but uh having having guys that have been around and and been with us a long time is huge so having b mike obviously i mean he's you know will be the next head coach at gonzaga and, and uh uh he's experienced he's a good he's a great recruiter he's a great people guy he has great relationships with our players he, i mean just he understands the whole thing and then I was Stephen Gentry who's played here and then he's been a bunch of different places and loves Gonzaga and he he's he's great player development great especially organizing scouts all that RJ's been a, a, a breath of fresh air with just positive energy and and uh, you know he's accumulated a ton of knowledge with all his experiences and travels and and networking you know with recruiting with all the different areas of the of the country he's been in uh, and then you know uh uh other guys on the staff now i got jp on this uh, is helping out and he's mostly in the weight room and and uh nutrition and snacks uh zach norvell's mm -hmm. on so he, i think he's got a real bright future in our our business and then uh jorge's great at keeping me organized and doing our scheduling and helping with all that and then uh kurt kurt's been a Bam Bauer has been a huge video guy, but he's so much more than that. I mean, he's got a good mind for basketball. So they, you lean on them a lot. I did switch our workouts this summer, so I'd be there for a good portion of them before I take out. I kind of scooted them more forward in the uh, late spring, early summer. Last thing before we let you go, because I know you've spent more time sitting here than you have this with a is, lot of others. This is the longest I've ever done <laughs> an interview. Yeah. Well, that means we're doing so, something right because so you I haven't just, just got up and left so far. Yeah, I don't know if you're doing something right. It's out of freer respect for <laughs> you and your career and name up in the rafters and, and also just the job you're doing, uh, you know, in your new media life well we're trying to shed a, a, a different light on gonzaga's play, program the players and really kind of you know share a lot of the stories we did this with a lot of players in the last fall uh it was name that zag so i'm just going to go through a couple questions and you can think about any zag that you coached past or current uh player most likely so that's a hard thing you do understand that right as a head coach to for you to you know yeah it's like doing the same thing with your kids or something. So well, it's not it's like not, favorite. I don't want to offend anybody. It's or. not favorite. <laughs> it's just a couple lighthearted things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'll probably pass on a lot of them. This <laughs> That's <laughs> perfectly fine. I mean, shoot, I would probably pass on many of them, throw yeah. them my way as well. But I got to get an answer or two here if I can. Most likely to push back when they're being coached. Uh, well, the obvious one, I think, is your partner in crime here. <laughs> he, he, I, the, my saying with him is he needed, he always had to be coached by the head coach. Uh, yeah. So uh, I just off the top of my head, but we've had some good, stubborn, stubborn guys. That's for sure. It's actually, from my perspective, it's good to have a, a stubborn guy or two yeah, on each team. I, right? It doesn't bother me in the least bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Player yeah. with the most off the court swagger or style 
Because huh. no. I've, I've heard you, going back to the days when I was in the locker room, somebody would wear a sweatshirt, a sweater, oh, a so pair of shoes, and talking you about just question, you throw a comment out clothing there. Clothing-wise, right? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, you know, like that, the 17-year, like, uh, um, boy, Nigel and Jeremy Jones, I mean, really stepped that thing up with their attire. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty, yeah. You yeah, couldn't man. pull off any of the outfits they pull, pulled? Uh, not, it was just impressive. That year, they made our whole team dress nicer for all our road trips. I mean, so the, the amount of pull they had with their swag was was palpable for sure. And yeah. Uh, Zag that would best handle the auxiliary cord as the DJ in the locker room. Yeah, or in the weight room. <laughs> the, the, okay, the DJ in the weight room or the locker room. Who, who would have the best music selection? Oh, wow, that's funny. We were just dealing with that uh, the other day. I was lifting with Killy and Tilly and we had French rap on. So, uh, and it's actually not that bad. Uh, well, first of all, when I walk in, I just put country music on. So, I mean, Morgan Wallen, Jason it, Aldean, which it's way you more, going? It's more who wants to stand up to the coach when, <laughs> he, uh, when he walks in. So that takes a special guy to, to do that. So, uh, ah, you know, the Nemhart, Nemhart boys have been good with that. Uh, uh, yeah, again, it's just kind of the, the latest group is, uh, I don't know what comes to mind on that one. You know, I, and then obviously Joe Fuse not afraid to go up to the thing and switch it. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't mind. <laughs> calling out Are there repercussions that. for that later that night? No, no, he knows it. So he just kind of, yeah. Uh, how about uh, Zag most likely to be given a team, a pep talk or a, a, a butt chewing when you were to come into the locker room at halftime or post game? Oh man, there's there's been some uh, some great ones there uh, over the years. Obviously, all the way back to your time, you know, maybe a Casey Calvary or uh, uh, somebody by, like that. You know, I think Nigel was one of the best uh, leaders we've had. Uh, you know, Corey Kispert, was, oh, somebody uh, could definitely do that. Um, I think I think this in the recent like just very very recent like Ben Gregg somebody that when he calls people out or says something people are going to uh, 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 react to that um, so yeah probably th those guys come to mind and then gosh there's just so many in the middle there you know I mean, yeah. Domus was really really quiet but boy if he said something yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was quiet but spoke you know was, was a big stick most likely to be a politician. Oh, huh. Uh, uh, Corey would make a great senator. At Ooh, living in Washington, D.C. right <laughs> yeah. now, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's as pure as the driven snow. So, uh, uh, yeah, probably somebody like him. No, Nigel. Nigel, again, good leadership, well-spoken. Awesome. Well, uh, I know you gave us more time than probably you wanted to, but I thank you for that. Yeah, and it went fast. I'll admit, it went fast. Yeah. Well, well maybe I'll have to uh, ask you to come again in the fall. I know it's it not. Might be a little bit redundant. Yeah, you know, well, so, well, we yeah, can preview maybe, the upcoming yeah, season. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that one out in the comes. But best of luck with the rest of the transfer portal. Uh, yeah. Best of luck with Team USA. I'm looking forward to watching that. That's going to definitely be a proud moment for all Gonzaga, you know, alums as a former player well i hope up for all the u.s man to just watch this team and watch all our olympians i mean i just love i grew up watching the olympics and anytime they're on now i mean it's just must watch tv i feel like so hopefully it'll be great, great sports gonna be awesome in in uh, paris and uh yeah awesome well thanks again coach for another special episode, obviously, that was Mark Few. Thanks for joining. We'll catch you again real soon.